Hi folks, this is Larry Benko, W0QE, and this is a simple video that you can play along with me and teaches you about both RF and SimSmith. I have done a few of these types of videos in the past, and they seem to have been well liked, so here's the question to answer. You have two devices that each cause your otherwise perfect system to have an SWR of X to 1. What will be the SWR or possible range of SWRs with both devices in the circuit? This is a question that we can use SimSmith to answer very, very easily, and it's kind of fun to do so. To begin with, let's start with a blank SimSmith circuit. When you bring up SimSmith, it may come up with components here, which are due to the fact that if you bring up SimSmith without specifying a file, it goes and looks in this location right here, and it takes whatever you were working on last. In this case, I was working on, I had a blank circuit, so it comes up with a blank circuit, but you may need to make yours blank. You can do File New Circuit, which makes it blank. First thing we're going to do is add a component here, which gives us an SWR. For the previous example, we mentioned we had two devices or two components in our circuit that were going to have an SWR of the same value. Let's make that value be 1.5 to 1. I can put a 1.5 to 1 circle on the Smith chart here by typing 1.5 there. I can zoom in on that point a long ways. I can set the Q of that inductor to be very, very high, which is what we want to want to have. If we're going to see the maximum SWR we could get with the two devices. And let's drop the value of the inductance down until we have a 1.5 to 1 SWR. That's very close. So now what we'll do is we'll take this device, which we will be something like an antenna switch, and let's put a piece of transmission line in series with it. It's going to be 50 ohm transmission line, and again, we're going to stay with the lossless concept because it gives us the, the best case answer and there's, gives us the maximum SWR. And we're going to click here and set this to give us one foot increments of transmission line length. And we're going to add a few feet of transmission line. And what we see on the Smith chart is a rotation due to the series inductance from 50 ohms. 50 ohms is here. We see the rotation due to 324.8 nanohenries. And then we see the rotation due, it's always clockwise rotation if you're going from the, from the load to the generator, due to the 5 feet of transmission line. Now if we have another device here, let's say it's an SWR bridge, which happens to have exactly the same amount of inductance. It really doesn't matter on this second device. I click on this, I can do Control C, Control V to, to make a, a duplicate copy. And that would give us the resultant of two, two devices that had 1.5 to 1 SWRs each. I could make this be a shunt inductor, I could make this be a series capacitor, shunt capacitor, it doesn't matter. But I made them the same in this case. But the resultant SWR in this circuit now is 1.890 to 1. That's more than 1.5 to 1. And if we look at this more closely, as we change the length in transmission line, we will notice something. We come to a point at 14.3 feet approximately, where the SWR at 10 megahertz only has been compensated for, so the two devices have canceled themselves out. This piece of transmission line has an SWR of 1.5 to 1 across it, but the generator doesn't see that at 10 megahertz. As we change frequencies, it would see that, of course. And we can show that very easily. We can go to, this, to the square chart. We can sweep the frequency. Good. Square chart, sweep the frequency. And we see that at 10 megahertz, it wasn't exactly 14.3 megahertz. Let me add some more points here. 14, it's pretty darn close to 14.3. Okay. At 14.3 feet, we set a 1.0 to 1 SWR, but at other, with the same length of transmission line, the best SWR we got could get it the whole range varies a lot. So this is not a broadband solution. Well, what it is, it, it does show that at one frequency, the two SWRs did, did, calc, did compensate themselves such, such that they canceled out. Now let's continue on with something a little bit different. And what we're going to do here is let's look at 
the square chart again, but let's sweep the length of the transmission line instead of the frequency. We're going to stay at 10 megahertz, and we're going to sweep the transmission line from 0 feet to, say, say 50 feet. A uh, half wavelength at 30 at uh, 10 megahertz is about uh, 49 feet with velocity factor one. So it's it's this is considerably more than half than half wavelength. And what we see is we see the repetition that we would get. But our peak SWR, which is what we were looking for, is a maximum of 2.25 to one, which is exactly 1.5 times 1.5. And if you're playing along with me, let me turn the power scale off. If you're playing along with me while I'm doing this, change these to be different SWRs and the peak SWR you will get in a lossless circuit will always be the product of the each SWR that each individual component or, or device produces in the, in the circuit. So if I had a device that was a 1.5 to 1 SWR, one that was a 2 to 1 SWR, I would have a maximum SWR of 3 to 1. If these are not equal, you won't ever get them to cancel each other out. But let's just change this for a minute to make it be worse, some value worse. What we see is the SWR here goes between 2.96 to 1 and 1.3 to 1. But we still see the, the peaks and valleys in SWR. And we can definitely, at 10 megahertz, set the length here to be something that gives us, here it's 13.3, 13.6 feet gives us the minimum SWR in this case. And We've answered the question, and if you remember, the, the, quest, the question was two devices that each cause your system to have the same SWR of 1.5 to 1 in this case, and then the answer to that question is going to be the result in SWR will be between 1 to 1 and 1 1.5 squared, or 2.25 to 1. You can continue on, change SWRs, you can add a third device, you can add more transmission line, you can do whatever you want to do, but the result will be you will continue to understand more and more about what's going on, and you'll also be able to understand SimSmith better. So this is a good example for learning how to navigate around SimSmith. Some of the early videos I did in the basic series also dealt with navigation in, in SimSmith. But this is one of those things that's kind of an easy topic. It's kind of fun to do. And if you like these simple topics, let me know. If you want more complicated topics, that's also fine. Thank you very much, and hope you enjoyed this.